Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explain preview. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Ash Paulson to talk about his time so far with Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challengers on the Switch. So let's get started. All right, Ash, well, you're going to be doing most of the talking here. It's sort of a nice role <laughs> reversal from my preview event at, uh, in New York, except you actually have uh, an, the review copy in for Ultra Street Fighter 2 on the Switch. So right off the bat, what are your general impressions so far? Um, well, I mean, it's fun. It's it's basically it's Street Fighter. Well, it's Super Street Fighter Two with uh, two quote unquote new characters being Evil Ryu and Violent Ken. And I mean, it's it's essentially it's if you played Super Street Fighter Two, you know what you're getting here. You know, it's it's Super Street Fighter Two but with two new characters. And I think that's generally in terms of the new content, in terms of the actual game, then that that's it. But there's of course a lot of other new stuff like there's a gallery mode where you can check out a Street Fighter art book. There's a Way of the Hotto mode, which is like a 3D first-person uh, mode where you play as Ryu and you can use motion controls to do his special attacks. And there are other, you know, accoutrements. There, are, you know, there's of course uh, verses like a, you know, local verses. There's online, which I can't test yet, so I haven't been able to play that. And of course, there's a good old arcade mode, which wouldn't be a big deal. But we all know about Street Fighter V and how <laughs> that didn't include an arcade mode, and that really, really upset people. So there is an arcade mode. I've been playing lots of that, and uh, there's also that. Um, I think it got its start in Street Fighter Alpha Three, but there's this two versus one uh, buddy battle mode. I think it was called Dramatic Battle back in Alpha Three. But it's basically you can. You can either play with a friend or with the CPU and uh, do a two-on-one battle against the, the CPU, basically. So there's a lot of different ways to play the game, but at its core, this is, you know, Super Street Fighter 2 with two new characters, basically. Mm. Well, tell me about those two new characters, since Evil Ryu has been available in other <laughs> games, I believe, and he's not yeah. that different from Ryu. But how different is Violent Ken to regular Ken, non-Violent Ken? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, like peaceful Ken. Um, so basically, Evil Ryu and Violent Ken are both like Akuma-like versions of Ryu and Ken. Like they, they're they're faster. I I don't know exactly how they differ because I'm not like a super technical Street Fighter player. But if I'm uh, you know if I'm not mistaken, I think they both have less health than their regular counterparts. But generally, their damage output is stronger, and they have you know a f their specials are mixed up. I know Ken can do this cool teleport thing. Sorry, Violent Ken <laughs> can do this cool teleport thing where he just like kind of like Akuma, where he just like quickly goes from one side of the opponent to the other and can just like dash around. And I thought that was pretty cool. So um, you know. That's why I said I quote unquote new because it's it's being very kind to call Evil Ryu and Violent Ken actually new. I mean, even their even their uh, select screen portraits are literally like palette recolors and swaps of the existing Ryu and Ken character portraits. So <laughs> they're obviously built from existing assets. They're not completely new characters, you know. We, it, we know exactly what we're getting here with these two final characters. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of had the <laughs> feeling that was going to be the case, yeah. but I don't know. It could have been surprising, could have could have been different or something to that effect. But uh, what have you gotten to try out so far? Have you tried all the different modes and all that stuff? Uh, what has stood out? Yeah, I mean, I basically tried everything except for online because I can't play online. Literally, online's not going to be enabled until the game comes out. So I'm going to be just as in the dark as anybody else buying it on launch day in terms of how the online support is. But everything else I've played, and I mean, I don't really have any complaints in general. I mean, it's it's Street Fighter 2, and, you know, for better and worse, that's what you're getting here. So if you're expecting a lot on top of that, you are you may not get that. But considering, you know, the Switch itself and how it's set up and how you have two controllers with you at, at any time, I have to say it's pretty cool to have what seems to be a definitive version of Super Street Fighter 2, you know, now Ultra Street Fighter 2 on this on the Switch where you can just, you know, play with anybody at any time. And this is like the original quarter muncher, you know, this is the original game that got people playing together, you know, competitively, in a sense. And so it's really cool, I think, to have that for the Switch in terms of, you know, I feel like it's a it's a match that's made in heaven in terms of this game and the Switch. <laughs> Well, I, I, that actually brings to mind another thing, because you mentioned uh, at, at preview events where you actually got to try out the Switch beforehand, uh, before right. it came out, they had this game available, uh, but they only had it playable with the Pro Controller. So the question is, how does it handle with the Joy-Con both in dock setting as well as uh, on its side? Not as bad as you'd think. I mean, let, let's be honest. Clearly, if you are a super technical pro Street Fighter player, the only controller you should be using is the pro controller or an arcade stick. Like, clearly, an arcade stick, like a fight stick or a pro controller, that is how you're going to play the game if you are a serious Street Fighter player. But for the rest of us, and, you know, for the casuals out there, 
I gotta say, like, playing with the Joy-Con in both configurations wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. It's obviously not as accurate, and you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna have misfires, you're not gonna be able to pull off special moves every time when you want to, but you know what? It could it could have been a lot worse. I was expecting playing with the Joy-Con to be a lot worse than it actually is, and I was surprised. I was pulling off even super combos with the Joy-Con, uh, and to be clear, I was using the control stick. Like, I cannot stand the separated face buttons for movement. <laughs> I cannot move and do special moves with that separated D-pad on the Joy-Con L. Not happening. <laughs> Didn't even make an attempt? <laughs> oh, I tried. Oh, no, I made an attempt, but it just was, it ended in failure after failure, and no, I, like, I think in general, if you want to play with the Joy-Con, you're going to want to use the control stick. Okay. <laughs> that's actually yeah. kind of funny. Uh, yeah. Because that to me, that's sort of a nightmare scenario to have to use the control stick for... I know. That's, that's what I always have to do when I played uh, Street Fighter 4 on the Xbox 360. I'd go over to a friend's place, and they'd have the 360, and I've, obviously I want to use the D-pad, but that D-pad sucks. So I Exactly. I mean, that's just how bad stick. I found the separated D-pad to be. Like, the, the control stick actually is better than the other option, which is saying a lot. But, mm -hmm. of course, though, you you know, Pro Controller, the game feels perfect. I mean, it feels like Street Fighter 2. It's, you know, the controls are spot on. I don't perceive any input lag. And, you know, of course, I have, like, a you know, an HDTV, and I don't, there's no input lag that I can tell. So, you know, if you're jonesing for a really good version of Street Fighter 2, this seems to be it. Of course, the verdict is still out. I'm going to keep playing it over the next week. But, yeah, I mean, it's I'm having a good time with it. I just wish I could play online. <laughs> yeah, that would be the real <laughs> test of everything uh, and yeah. sort of the new content and whatnot. But uh, I guess that's the way it goes for now, at least. I guess the uh, other thing is, like, I, how does it run on the, on the Switch? Obviously, this can't be the most taxing game out there, so <laughs> I'm sure the Switch is able to handle it fine, but I'm guessing you didn't, didn't notice any hiccups or bumps or any way, anything like that? No, not at all. The, the game runs fine, and I have to say, it, it actually looks especially great on the Switch's screen, like when you're playing in handheld mode. Both the classic and the new style of graphics, like they both really pop on the Switch's screen, uh, even more so than on, on, a, on a TV, in my opinion. Like, it looks good on the TV, it looks fine, but it really looks especially good on that smaller screen with a greater pixel density and I really thought I felt the characters really popped uh, against the backgrounds and so I mean I wouldn't say it's my necessarily my preferred way to play but I was really impressed with how nice the game looks on the Switch's screen. I, I do have one kind of exception to that oh. and I'm not crazy about the new well so you can you can choose between classic and new right and you can choose between classic and new graphics and sounds. The new graphics are, are pretty good, and I think you're going to like them if you like the art style already. Um, but if the art style's not working for you, I think it just, across the whole game, it's like the kind of that similar style, and I don't think it'll work for you. However, the uh, new sounds are kind of what I take issue with. Like, there's a whole suite of remixed music here, and I'm not feeling it. I, I almost immediately, after playing with the, the new music for a while, I switched right back to the classic music. It just doesn't... Some of them are good, some of the remixes are good, but on the whole, they're just not doing it for me, and they don't have that punchiness to me that the original soundtrack does. So I've been playing mostly with the classic music and sounds on. Okay. Well, that's cool, though, that you at least have the option. They're not forcing you to play with yeah. the remix music and all that. And, and you can actually you can mix and match. So you can actually play with like the new graphics and the old music if you want, or the classic graphics and the new music. Like It's pretty cool. There actually is one new thing about this whole package, and that is the way of the Hado mode. <laughs> And uh, how much have you played of that so far? So um, I've, I've played, well, there are really only three stages. There's basically a training mode, and there are three stages, easy, regular, and hard. And I've played all three of them, and I've beaten the first two, and then I died in the, on the hard one. Um, so I've played a, enough of it to know, I guess. Um, there, there isn't, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot to it. It's kind of like a cool aside. But I don't know, you know, I, I'm going to test it more over the next week and see if it, like, really grows on me. But this does seem to be probably what a lot of us were expecting which is kind of like a like a cool thing to check out for a little bit but then i'm not sure how much staying power it actually has mm -hmm. you know yeah uh for those of you though for those who aren't aware uh what is way of the auto mode like what it, so how do you yeah. play, how do you play it since it does seem to be motion control based yeah, so Way of the Hotto is, I guess, it's for, for lack of a better term, I guess it's almost this game's arms mode, because you're basically holding the two Joy-Con, and you're using motion controls, and you're essentially playing as Ryu in this first-person mode with, like, Street Fighter 4-style graphics, basically. Uh, better than that. Well, I guess, yeah, ar around that. But 
basically you're using the Joy-Con motion controls to do Ryu special moves. So the Hadouken, the Shoryuken, and the Tatsumaki Simpu Kyaku. And you can also do his super combo, which is a Shinku Hadouken. And basically, you know, you do these things how you might expect. So like for the Hadouken, you thrust both Joy-Con out forward. And for the Shoryuken, you, you know, make an uppercut motion with one of your arms, you know, holding the Joy-Con. So it's exactly kind of what you think it is. Um, it's fun and it, you know, it looks cool, but I'm, I'm a little iffy on the motion controls. Like, I, I do have a lot more testing to do. I want to make it clear. I haven't played Way of the Hado too much, but the motion controls are not quite there for me yet in terms of the accuracy. I feel like I, for example, like, I feel like I trigger a hurricane kick just as often by, like, shaking the Joy-Con wildly as I do by doing what the game wants me to. <laughs> yeah, so that, that was always the biggest concern is, like, will the motion controls actually work for this mode and keep it interesting because otherwise i mean you don't have to move it all it's just it's it's almost like a rail shooter right kind of yeah i mean and you don't really even move at all period like the, the you you're you're basically stuck to the ground your your feet are planted in the ground and basically these shadowloo soldiers come at you but ryu can't move so they just basically come at you and you can choose how you want to deal with them so like if there are Shadowloo soldiers way in the background throwing fireballs at you, then of course you want to throw Hadoukens at them. And then there'll be others kind of trying to flank you and approach you, and you can use like a, a Tatsumaki Simpu Kyaku to hit them all in a line, or, you know, it's it's very light strategy. It's not like there's a whole lot of in-depth mechanics here. Mm. Um, this is definitely something I think that they kind of added in there to say, hey, it's not just Street Fighter 2, <laughs> but we have this other mode in here too, and... I can see them attempting to give it some longevity because you can actually gain experience after each round and throw that, that experience into different uh, parameters. So you can increase reuse attack or speed or super combo meter, whatever. But I, as, as far as I can tell, the only really reward for that is to be able to get through the existing stages even faster and maybe get higher scores. But I'm not really sure how much staying power there is in Way of the Hotto beyond that. But as I said, I'm going to keep playing it over the next week and make a final determination on that. Mm -hmm. Now, can you only do the special moves or can you do regular just punches as well? Only special moves. Really? Okay. Yeah. So only, on basically, the you can do... Well, not that's not strictly true. So you do the three main special moves. You can do a super combo and then you can block. So there is a blocking motion too. Okay. Huh. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure how to feel about that one just because you can't... It just seems weird that you just can't punch a guy in the face. <laughs> just... That's you know, and I kind of felt like that. Like I, when I had like uh, Shadowloo soldiers approaching me, I kept thinking I just want to throw out like a quick jab just to stun them for a bit while I deal with something else. But you can't do that, so it does feel a little limiting. I have to say, like only being able to do reuse three main special moves and then an occasional super combo, it does feel a little limiting. It's something to put on the back of the box. I think it seems like it, it kind of it's kind of feeling like that to me. Like I'm not seeing a lot of meat to this mode. I have to say. Mm -hmm. Is there really th anything else you wanted to mention about uh, uh, Ultra Street Fighter 2? Yeah, I guess just uh, in general, I do like that they're making uh, an attempt to appeal to casual players. There's actually a control mode that I haven't tried myself yet. I plan to. Um, but there's a control mode called Light, where you can actually assign uh, full special moves to like individual buttons. So that's great, I think, for younger players or you know more casual players who just want to be able to pull off flashy stuff without having to memorize button combinations. Mm -hmm. And I'm somewhere in the middle. Like I'm not like a super hardcore Street Fighter player, but I mean, come on, I know my quarter circle punches and my shoryukens, and you know, yeah. I know the general motions, charging back, and you know, Guile's moves and all that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like for people who necessarily who maybe didn't grow up with it, that's a nice option. It makes me think back to my time as a kid when I had. Uh Street Fighter 2 Hyper Edition for the Genesis, and <laughs> I never knew how to do any of the special moves, but I always picked Chun-Li because I could do her... Uh, I, I liked how she could bounce on people's heads. <laughs> That's what, Right, and, I and could, she can do that here. Yeah, and I could easily, and I could easily do the... Um, uh, the just mash the button in order to do her uh, bird kick, uh, like rapid kick uh, move, and that's why I always chose Chun-Li. I could not play anybody else because I could only do the basic stuff, and meanwhile, every other character was destroying me. So as a kid, yeah. as a dumb kid, I would appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I think that's a nice kind of a nice way for them to try to bridge the skill gap. Um, I'm sure, I don't know for, for sure, of course, but I assume that you will not be able to use light mode online against people who are playing like the regular way. That wouldn't make sense. So I'll just have to hope that's the case because I can't test online yet. Um, let's see, what else is there? Um, there is a color picker mode that I should talk about really quick where you can go in and you can literally set custom colors for 
every character in the game, and they can be wacky colors too. And I'm not talking about just their clothes. You can change their skin tones, different parts of their clothes, their hair. So you can have like a, a DJ with like green skin and pink clothes and like <laughs> blue hair. It's pretty cool that you can, you can make these like radioactive looking street fighters basically. <laughs> Turn everybody into Blanca. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you really can do that. And it's pretty cool. Like it's, uh, I, I, it's an added bit of customization that I feel like is, you know, fun on top of what is already expected. Mm -hmm. Plus, um, and if, you, yeah. if they allow you to do, use that online, I mean, you could really have just your own personalized Ryu. So even though it's Ryu versus Ryu, it's your own Ryu. <laughs> exactly. And um, let's see. On that note, I guess something else is kind of cool that they didn't have to throw in but did is that there is a gallery mode that's essentially just a... It's a Japanese Street Fighter art book, um, and you can just flip through it and zoom in on whatever page you want, and you can listen to whatever music from the game that you want at the same time. So it's kind of like an in-game art and music viewer. And basically you just go through this art book. What kind of uh, confuses me, I guess, is because of my unique position as having been an editor for Udon, we did that art book in English, and I don't know why they didn't just throw that in there so we, you know, people could read the commentary, but what are you gonna do? It is the Japanese art book, so you know there's <laughs> gonna be some stuff you can't read in there, but the art is beautiful, there's a lot to look at, and it's like 200 and something pages. There's a lot of content. Hey, you worked on it, so you know it's quality. <laughs> yeah, so I think I've basically covered everything, and um, I, at this point, I'm basically thinking, if you're jonesing for a really fun version of Street Fighter 2 on the Switch, this is basically it, but of course, you know, there is that kind of elephant in the room where there, you know, you can get this game on other platforms for less money. So it's going to be an interesting kind of uh, place that this game has in the market, I think. But I'm having fun with it, and I'm looking forward to kind of figuring out more about it over the next week. Cool. So everybody will be able to look forward to your review uh, relatively soon. I think you said next week, right? Yeah, so, or no, sorry, I, I'm going to play it all through next week. The review embargo actually isn't until May 25th, so uh, you won't see my review until... Uh, a week from Tuesday, I believe, or a week from Wednesday, I think is what it is. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I think that covers it for our Street Fighter Switch preview. So, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. And of course, make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for more on the Switch and other things gaming too. Until next time, bye. <laughs>